In this video, I'm gonna show you how to completely refresh a BMX hub set front and rear, and we're gonna be using Profile Elite Hubs as the example for this. So this will also serve as a how to take all of the bearings out of these hubs, as well as the pawls and springs, and replace them in Profile Elite and many hub sets because it's the same process for both. The components are just slightly different. With that being said as well, I do have an older video on this, but I don't have access back then to the top down, so we're gonna make it an even better video. So the first thing we're gonna be doing is taking the front wheel here, and we're going to be showing you how to take the bearings out of a front wheel or hub. So basically, if we have a female hub, we can literally just make sure that our axle bolts are tightened in enough to where when we hammer on this axle bolt, it's not going to mess up the threads inside our axle. So I'm gonna make sure it's at least like halfway in there. And if you have a male axle, you're gonna to wanna to take off any hardware that when this is hammered on this side, that prevents it from going through the hub. And if it is a male axle, you're gonna have an axle nut. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that your axle nut is tightened onto your axle until the axle is flush with the outside of the nut. So with that being said, it's very straightforward here in that we're just going to literally take a hammer and hammer on our axle right here. And as you see, we hammer on it and it's pushing the bearing out of the other side. We have to loosen just a little bit more in order to get that bearing all the way out. So there's that. And now you can see bearing is loose. And all we have to do to take the axle out now is remove this axle bolt from this side. Our cone spacer comes with it and axle comes out. So at this point, we need to take off this bearing and this cone spacer and they're pretty they're pretty stuck here. This side came off very easy and was forced off essentially. So what I'm going to do in this process, I'm actually gonna put this back in here and I'm going to hammer out through the other side. So essentially you're seeing how to put the bearings back in already as well, just in that we make sure that our axle bolt is tightened in enough that it's not gonna hurt our threads. And we make sure everything is aligned properly with the hub shell. And now we can pull this and you can see that that hammering action actually loosened up that cone spacer, but our axle is still stuck in here because our bearing went back into this side a little bit or bearing back into this side a little bit and this side isn't out yet. So we loosen our axle bolt just a little bit so that we can hammer on it. This bearing is now out. Now the axle will come out of this side, but now what about this bearing? Well, this bearing gets pushed out by putting our axle in here, tightening down a bolt. We should probably make sure in this that we don't have a cone attached to it. And once we have one bearing out, it's literally just back and forth here. Start tightening that bolt in, and then we can hammer on the bolt, and it pushes our bearing out the other side, and boom, bearings are out, and axle is out. So we have an empty hub shell here. Everything is good. Now, we have our old bearings, we're gonna set those aside. And I have two brand new bearings here. Profile bearings, straight from profile. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna grab one of these bearings, slide it onto our axle, and then we're going to take this axle and we're gonna put it into the hub upside down. So this is going to allow this bearing to get pressed into the hub without the axle being in there or finite. So we'll be able to take that axle out and put the other side in. So we want to definitely make sure in this process that the bearing is going in the way that it's supposed to. So I'm going to do this one like this because I don't want to risk anything by not having it, you know, vertical or by having it vertical like I did. So right here, Sometimes you may have to put it here to give it a bracing. Boom. 
bearing is now in the hub and you can see it is in there, spins nicely. And what we can do now is we can grab our other bearing and we can take it and put it onto this side, grab our cone spacer, our hardware, and put it onto here so that when we tighten this down and then we put it into the hub, of course you need to make sure that the axle bolt is out so that you can put it through the other side. But when we do this now, everything will go back together the way that it completes the hub. So we can take this one. I'm not as worried about this one because we have the axle in here and it's ensuring that it is straight and gonna go in the way that it's supposed to. So that's that, but sometimes you'll see that it does push the bearing out of the other side. And this is a back and forth process that does, can and does happen. And so if you notice, hammering this side on there, put this side back. And what we can do to finish this up is we could just grab an Allen wrench with our bolt and our washer and just tightening this bolt down with the washer on it is going to push that cone onto the right side. So now you can see tightening this bolt down, boom. Slowly is just putting this back on and thinking logically about this, this is what you could do in order to just put them on from the start. You don't necessarily have to hammer on them. And we now have a refreshed front hub that is spinning so beautifully. Oh. Front hub done. 99% of front BMX wheels are similar to that in the process. So now, rear hubs. Rear hubs are a little bit different in that we have to go from drive side through the other, through the non-drive side. So what we gotta think about in here is that it's virtually the same, but we just have to start with the drive side hammering first. So we're just gonna keep that out like that and hammer. And now you can see it is indeed loose. So when we take our axle bolt out here, slider axle out, boom. Axle comes out solid and driver is right there. So we're gonna be refreshing the driver as well, but we're gonna start with the bearings on this and what we gotta make sure when we take this apart before you do any of this is that you make sure you keep all of the components because if you lose any of this, you lose any of these paws or springs or with a profile hub, if you lose this washer right here that goes between your driver and the bearing, if you lose any of that, you're probably gonna have problems. And if you lose this washer, the spacer here, you're going to have hub wobble. It needs to be there. So I like to put this aside and make sure that I put it in an orientation that I'm gonna remember. So down goes in the hub like this. And profile hubs are actually not supposed to have any kind of lubrication or grease in them. So I'm not sure how this grease actually got in here. I don't even know if I've ever taken this apart since I got it and I did get it used. So it's possible that it's had some or just coming out of the bearings over time or whatever it might've been, but cleaning that out. And before we go any further forward with this wheel, I wanna talk about male axles on BMX hubs because it's a slightly different process and I tried to explain it earlier, but I wanna make sure that I illustrate this to you. So with a male hub and a male axle, we need to take off our hardware on the drive side first. This is why I was explaining you have to do drive side first in that this hub has hardware that is locked on here by threads. So if we remove the axle nut and the washer, this jam nut is threaded onto the axle. So you can imagine that if we had our axle nut on here in order to hammer on it, and we hammered on this with this threaded on here, this is not gonna go through the hub because it's threaded. Same with the other side, because that's threaded, if we hammer that, it's not gonna be able to go through the hub. So we wanna make sure in this process 
that we're taking off the hardware on the male axle. And this is a Profile Totem hub, which has the same internals as a Mini. But we take this off of here. We notice one of our paws fell out. And now we're able to put our axle nut back on here. I'll even do it upside down because it's got a larger surface area for hammering. And we might as well just do it so that you guys can see the full process. And if you have a male front hub, this is going to be similar if it has hardware that threads on. So now that this axle nut is threaded onto the axle, we are more safe to hit this and not worry about messing up our threads and push this bearing out the other side. So if we hit this, boom, bearing is out the other side. And once this axle nut comes off, we will be able to slide the axle out, take this off as we did with the front hub, and then hammer this other bearing out through this side. All right, so back to this hub. We've got the axle out. We've got a cone spacer that is a little bit stuck on the axle, just like it was on the front hub. So what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to flip our wheel back over, put the axle through, and we're going to hammer this back in and out through the other side, forcing this cone spacer off. So we're gonna make sure everything is flat. And through a little bit of hammering, we didn't even have to put this bearing all the way back in to get this cone spacer to come off. So once again, we can just take our axle nut off here, and instead of putting it back into the side we were already hammering on, we're going to take it and flip it, put it onto the drive side, Tighten it into here, making sure that it's not gonna hurt the threads. And then we're gonna hammer that back out. We have this side loose. We can slide that bearing off, set it aside because we don't need it anymore. And now we can take the axle, tighten the axle nut in. And because the bearing's out on this side, we just need to remove this bearing. We can hammer from this side out through there. Tighten that all the way in. In my experience, the inner bearing on the inside of the drive side can be very difficult to get out. So I'm going to make sure I'm bracing it properly and hitting it so that we can just make it as easy as possible. Same process as the front though. And one thing that I'm realizing I need to tell you guys is that when you're doing this, as you get closer to the hub on this side, and you get this bearing further and further out, you going to make sure you're hitting less and less hard so you don't just blast through this thing and completely ruin the flange on your hub. That is very unfortunate if something like that were to happen. So make sure you're aware of everything going on while you're doing this. And there we have it. Bearings are out of both sides of the hub. So first things first, is I'm gonna make sure that I loosen the non-drive side on this, take the axle bolt out of there, and we're gonna put the bearing onto this side, and then we're gonna flip the hub, or the axle, put the axle bolt into the drive side on there, and we're gonna put the bearing into the non-drive side first. This is the one that is going to allow us to make sure that this bearing is in here and our axle and everything is aligned properly when we're putting in the drive side bearing. So I'm going to make sure that this is horizontal here. We've got adequate support and just like that, that bearing is in. Oh man. Oh, that's gotta go in the video. Now, we are ready to put the other bearing in. And as I was explaining before, putting that other bearing in allows us that when we put the axle into the hub, it makes sure that this bearing is properly aligned and squared off so that it can get properly pressed into the hub. And in order to do that, I'm going to do, instead of hammering on it, because it's kind of hard to get to that when it's inside the hub, take all of my old bearings, you can even use your driver, and then I'm just gonna take an axle nut here, put it through there, 
And then in this process, because everything is aligned and we have the space taken up the way that it needs to be, that when we tighten this thread down, it's going to compress and push the bearing into the hub. So you could hammer on this, you could do it a number of different ways, and you may find that you need to have your other axle nut into the other side in order to tighten this down. So because we're gonna be completely refreshing these hubs, we have brand new axle bolts, the button head bolts, as well as in our hardware pack, the new jam cone spacers to put on there as well. So I'm gonna get all of that prepared. This has the pawls and springs in it, so we will do those next. But we wanna make sure we grab our non-drive side. So non-drive side on the profile hubs is the Volcano thicker one, and the drive side is the one that looks like this. Make sure you got that correct as well. There's a lot of things that can go wrong and you can mess up in this process. And you definitely don't want to do that and have to go backwards or worst case, buy anything new. So we grab our button head bolt. We grab the washer that comes with it, slide it onto that. And we grab our non-drive side cone on here. And then we're going to put that into our non-drive side and tighten it down so that we have something to tighten against when we're pushing this bearing into the hub. So that's tightened down. Now we're ready to tighten this down and we're going to obviously need something in the drive side as well as something in the non-drive side. We're just gonna tighten this down and I'm gonna try to give you a view that shows you the bearing getting pushed into the hub because it's already pressing in so smoothly. Hard to see, I know, but it's almost all the way in already. And I'm just going to tighten this. I felt a very, very distinct stopping point there. So that's where I'm gonna stop with that. And we can go ahead and back off everything that we had here. Then we can go ahead and back off with everything that we had tightening on the drive side. Take that out, grab our driver, slide our bearings back off. And if we look closely here, bearing is installed, smooth spinning. So at this point, we can take our spacer that we took out, make sure it's in the proper orientation, put it back in there. This side is complete, and this is how jam or cone spacers are supposed to be. They're supposed to just slide very easily, just like that. So the next step in this process would be to replace the pawls and springs in the driver. And before we go taking out the old ones, I wanna make sure that you guys are clear on the fact that you need to make a note of or take a picture of or do something so that you remember which way the springs and pawls are oriented. On this driver at least, the springs can only go in one side and the pawls can only go in one side, but the difference is that you can actually accidentally try to put these paws in upside down and if you don't know it, you can get all the way done and realize you did it wrong or the spring orientation can be different as well because these springs will go in here this way where it is wrong for these hubs or this way where it is correct for these hubs. So I'm gonna take these paws and springs out and then we will replace them. We wanna just make sure that we're remembering the way that these things were in here in the first place and also set aside these paws and springs and keep them in a safe place in case anything ever happens to one of yours or one of your friends in their hub. So we're popping these out of here. I have definitely made a note of how they go in so we can make sure to remember that. And once we get all of our old pawls and springs out and the hub or the driver is clear. We can go ahead and clean this thing up. I'm not gonna lie to you. I've retaken this like four different times to try and make sure I have it right. So this is already clean and we can grab our new sets. And this is where I wanna make the distinction of how these 
springs go into this hub. So if we look at this spring right now, you can see that it has this shape that Profile calls a nine shape. In the Elite hubs, where there are six paws and six springs in this driver, this piece goes to where the curve of the nine is facing outward. Outward, just like this. I'm gonna show you again. Just like this, outward. Now, if we have a mini or a totem or another hub with less than six paws and springs, it is flipped. The curved part goes inward, just like this. And it would go into the driver like this. We have an elite driver here and an elite hub. So we're gonna make sure that that curve part or the nine is facing the way that it is supposed to be, which is just like that. And then we're gonna go ahead and grab one of our paws and slide it in facing so that the, the bulge part of it is downward so that when it rings around and it's clicking, it is right there. And it can help that if you have a screwdriver or something close by, you can push in on your spring in order to finally and fully seat that paw. And then what I'll do too is I'll push down on that spring to make sure it is fully bottomed out. And as you can see, it is springing correctly. So I'm gonna go ahead and go around and put all of these springs in first making sure that we have them in the correct orientation. Having this little screwdriver makes it so you don't have to try and do this with just your fingertips, but also be careful at the same time because you don't wanna mess anything up either with your brand new pawls and springs. Two more, and then we will be able to show you how to replace it in the hub. So all of the brand new pawls and springs are in. I'm gonna take a final lap around, just pushing down on the springs to make sure they're fully seated. And now, as you can see, we have very springy pawls here. And we can go ahead and we can grab our wheel. And the way that I like to do this is that one, I make sure that this spacer is in here and that everything inside the hub is wiped out and cleaned. And another note here as well on the drivers that Profile will recommend that you could put a drop of TriFlow on the pawl, right where it seats inside the driver. So you can do that as well. And And another note on the driver is that Profile will recommend, and I know that earlier I said that the pro, and I know, and I know earlier I said how Profile does not recommend to use lubrication or grease in their hubs. There is one place inside this hub that they do recommend something, and that is at the point where the Paul sits inside the driver, they recommend one drop of TriFlow right there, one drop. No more, I'm literally only using what comes out of the, the bottle of TriFlow with gravity. I'm wiping off the top part because it probably seeped down in there. And now we can grab our wheel and show you how this goes in here. So when it comes to putting a driver back into a hub, I always go upside down with the wheel, driver facing up, so that when we put this onto the axle like this, it can't let those paws or springs fall out. Imagine if we were doing this and we were facing it downward, they could all just fall out. So the next thing that we do is we rotate the driver in a way that closes our paws as we push upward on the driver. And if the process of just pushing and rotating isn't working for you, you can take that screwdriver you used for your paws and springs and push down on your paws individually as you put pressure on the driver and maybe rotate a little bit in that process 
until you can get that driver to go into the ratcheting ring, just like that. So, the driver is in, oh, 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 that sounds good. So, we can take our new cone spacer for the drive side, press it onto the axle, should go on with just pressure at this point because it's new. We can grab our button head bolt as well as the washer that comes with it. Slide it onto the bolt and tighten it into the axle. We don't really have to worry about making sure that washer is on the larger part until we're going to install it. But here we go, a refreshed rear profile hub. Mm. That's, yeah, <laughs> that sounds so good. So with that being said, if you had a male axle in the rear, and you were going to put everything back together. So let's just say we had our driver out, you know, we put it back in. What we would do is replace our hardware on the male axle, our jam nut. We would get this in here and we would tighten this down. And we definitely wanna make sure that this is tight. So you may use a wrench and hold the other side steady. And then we replace this jam nut on this side as well, just making sure everything is tight and then everything would be good on that front. So with that being said, that is how you refresh front and rear profile hubs. The process should be very similar to this, whether you have an Elite with six paws and springs or a Mini or Totem or whatever that might be. The Z Coaster is going to be completely different and if you have another style of hub, it should be close if it's a conventional, you know, Paul and Spring cassette hub or a lot of front hubs are very similar. So if it's any different or it's too different to where you have questions, leave them in the comments down below or shoot me a message on Instagram and I'll do my best to help you. But I hope this is an improvement over my previous how to totally rebuild profile hubs video. And I thank you for watching. Thank you to Matt at Profile for helping me to refresh the hubs for my trails bike. It is so smooth spinning now. Oh, that's nice. I'm gonna be going probably too fast in the trails. So on that note, I wanna thank you for watching as well. Hit the subscribe button down below if you haven't yet, and hopefully that'll mean we'll see you tomorrow for another one. Thank you again for watching.